Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, 9 March 2021. And we've convened together today with our colleague Moshe Schechter joining us all the way from Beit Shemesh, Israel. Thank you, Moshe, for taking time out of your very busy schedule and resource sharing, connecting the document, resource sharing, document delivery, connecting the dots. If anyone has a question or comment during the session, send it in through the chat and we'll make sure Moshe gets it periodically between sections. And I will stop sharing here and turn it over to you, Moshe. One moment, please, while I make you the presenter and the panelist and make him a panelist. Okay, Moshe, you should be able to take it away now. Okay, I don't have a share option. Okay, let's right click you. You should be the presenter now, passing presenter privileges to Moshe Schechter. There we go. Okay. I've got it. All right. We see your screen. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you for joining us for this uh, session. Um, what we would like to uh, uh, talk about uh, for today, there are actually two topics that I've put on our agenda for today. This is kind of a follow-up on a previous session that we had uh, late December, uh, right before the holidays, about article use for sharing requests in Alma networks. The links are here. Uh, we talked about how article requests can be uh, placed and managed, and we walked through a workflow. Uh, you can find that information in those links. Um, we wanted to, or I thought it would be appropriate to share with you and make sure that you're aware of some additional information uh, that can be useful uh, when using um, article document delivery via Alma's user sharing uh, tools. Um, I would like to make a comment. We are not talking about rapid ILL. We're talking about Alma resource sharing and Alma resource sharing only. So everything that we will be discussing has to do with uh, processing a request using Alma resource sharing uh, only. So it's not related to, to rapid ILL, although some of the workflows that we will be looking at are relevant also if you're using rapid ILL. Uh, but this session is not for rapid ILL users, it is for Alma. Um, and for those of you doing or interested in doing document delivery, resource sharing um, using Alma's capabilities. So there are two topics here that um, uh, I would like us to cover today. Uh, the first one is about fulfilling article requests uh, using your own library, own physical issues. The idea here would be that if you have uh, a document delivery service based on your own physical inventory, so in other words, if you allow your patrons to request resources that you own physically, and uh, the patrons should be able to request them to receive them scanned in digital format, then this service can be consolidated into the resource sharing uh, service. We'll see uh, how exactly that will look like. But generally, you know, many of us are today um, interested or already doing uh, more uh, document delivery for our patrons because of all these closures and everything that is going on. Many of us are doing digitization for the patrons that cannot access the physical resources themselves. So what we'll see now is how we can consolidate that process so the patron experience would be a single request option. Get this for me, and Alma will navigate these requests to be either fulfilled based on your own self-owned physical inventory or forwarded to a remote resource sharing lender. So the patron does not have to be exposed to two request options, either resource sharing or the organization. Instead, the patron just places a request and the request is either routed to your own inventory for fulfillment or it goes to a uh, remote lender. So we'll see that workflow, we'll see the relevant configurations. And then on the second half of our uh, session, uh, we would like to take the time to look at the options that the uh, lender library has for processing the organization requests, specifically requests that come in for something you own physically. Um, how does the lender manage? There are different workflows and potential options that you may want to consider. So we'd like to make sure that you're aware of all the options uh, you have. So we have lots to talk about. 
So we'll jump right into it and start with our first topic. Um, so as I mentioned, we want to look at how to use resource sharing as the single service by which patrons request to receive documents, document delivery service, instead of relying on both a digitization for self-owned uh, resources and resource sharing for not self-owned resources. Now, the basic rationale here is that the resource sharing uh, uh, process is very well suited for managing article requests. The form, the request form, for, first of all, uh, is, is uh, very rich in the, in the metadata that it has, the article-related metadata, uh, pages, publication information, article information, as we'll see. Um, the lender that receives these requests, um, as we'll see in the second half of our discussion today, can use different types of workflows to manage this request, uh, relates to branch libraries for managing or manage it in the resource sharing library. We'll see that in the second half of our uh, discussion. The resource sharing process is also, um, again, we'll see the details of that in the second half of our discussion, uh, but can pretty well accommodate the different practices that there are there for managing requests uh, on physical issues. Um, there are different uh, practices out there uh, used by, by libraries. When it comes to how to catalog physical um, issues, some libraries will catalog every single issue. So if I receive a, a, a journal and I receive the periodical every month, so every month there will be a new physical item in Alma, and every single item is described in Alma and can be requested separately. However, some libraries do not have this uh, practice and instead have only one item cataloged that, re that reflects all of my coverage. So if I have 57 volumes, um, I may have in my library only one physical item and the description for this item says volumes 1 to 57. So I don't have 57 physical items, I just have one. And its description reflects the fact that this actually represents 57 different volumes. Yet another option may be that some libraries will not even have any physical item, not even a single one. Instead, we'll have only a holdings record that will have a summary stated, um, a summary holding statement that will say, I have 57 uh, volumes. Resource sharing process, and we'll go into the details of that in the second half of our discussion, um, can process the different options here. Um, and so that the resource sharing requesting that we look at uh, can accommodate each one of these different uh, practices. So we'll see the details of that um, later in this uh, session. Okay. Um, of course, the main advantage of this consolidation, other than, of course, the patron experience, which is a very important advantage, the patron will have one link for requesting anything, um, is that also the library processing uh, is then automated. The request is either forwarded to you as the uh, uh, inventory owners, or if you do not have that inventory, automatically forwarded down the road up to other potential lenders. So th th these are the bullets that have to do with why would I do that? It would create a simple workflow for the patron or the library. Now let's take a look at that, what that uh, will actually uh, look like. So I've captured here a few uh, screens to us to uh, uh, quickly walk through this uh, workflow and get a sense of what it would look like. In my example here, I've been using my uh, demo environment, the Alma University. Um, and what we will be doing is requesting an article from this journal. Okay, so this is a journal that I have cataloged here. So I have this physically, as we see down here. I have this physically in my library. In my example here, I have cataloged a single item that has a description that says this item actually um, reflects the fact that I have 57 volumes, but I've not cataloged or barcoded 57 physical items. Instead, I just have one physical item in Alma, and it says that this covers 57 different uh, volumes. So this is what I have in my inventory. The patron workflow would be like that. So we have here a Primo screen, and my patron is logged into, uh, uh, into Primo and is doing a search in the CDI, in the Central Discovery Index, looking for a specific article. So the patron is interested 
not in the journal, but in a specific article from this journal. And using my expand my results, um, the patron typing in, typing in the uh, article uh, title found this specific article in the central discovery um, index. So opening the uh, full view of this uh, article, um, I apparently do not have electronic access to this article, but the patron does see down here in the edit tab that I do have an item and I have volumes uh, 1 to 57 um, here. In addition, what the patron uh, does see is that I have a request option here, get this for me. Ignore the other request options here. They're just uh, part of my demo environment. Of course, uh, they may be uh, removed or not relevant for your uh, library. I do have a get this for me, which is actually a resource sharing request. You'll see how, how I have configured this, uh, but the patrons just sees here a single service, get this for me. And there is no request service down here. So no digitization option that shows in the uh, uh, get it for uh, requesting to digitize. So the patron is actually uh, um, exposed to one and one only service. Just get this for me. Clicking on this, the patron gets our resource sharing uh, form um, and all the benefits of using the resource sharing form. So the article information is automatically populated into this uh, form, the article title, the issue, publication information, the page range, even the patron's email already gets automatically populated. So actually the patron has no more work to do here about fulfilling the form just to verify that indeed the information is uh, what, uh, uh, what they asked for and what they would like to request. But other than that, just to submit, get the uh, copyright uh, warning, agree to the terms, and that's it, the request is submitted. So the patron experience was look for an article, Get the get this for me option there. Click on it, get a form, verify it is what I, I, what I intended to request, submit, agree to copyright terms, that it request is created. Now what actually happens is that this is a resource sharing request. So now at the Alma University, which is the patrons uh, uh, university, I have a resource sharing request, a bore resource sharing request the way normal resource sharing requests are created. So this comes in with all of the article information. But what is special about this request is that the partner that has been assigned to this request is what I called in my demo environment myself, which is actually a partner that reflects my own resource sharing library. In other words, when I will do a send on this request, it will send the request not to some remote lender, but rather back to myself. So I've configured a partner record uh, um, that has the uh, URL, my own Alma URL, my own Alma uh, uh, resource sharing library, um, ISO symbol on it. So just as I would have configured a remote um, uh, lender, I configured here a partner that is actually using my own ISO symbol. The result will be that when I do send, I'm actually sending this request to my own resource sharing library, as we will see. Now, this is the request uh, roadmap. We can see that um, and we're not going into the details. You're probably familiar, well familiar with the road assignment rules. Now that is created. And if you're not familiar, then more information on, on, on the other documents that we refer to. Um, so I have here a roadmap that I put myself as first on, on this roadmap. Um, obviously, a locate process um, runs and identifies that I have this inventory. So the locate profile is also directed to my own inventory. Therefore, it searched my own inventory and found out that I do have this uh, journal. But on my Rota, I have other lenders. So I have the Open University, which is another remote institution, not myself, that is on my Rota. And in fact, it, just for the sake of the example, here also rapid ILL um, as partners. So the request could go either to my own uh, uh, inventory for fulfillment, if not, into another consortial lender, and if not, to another broker, which could be rapid ILL, Iliad, or any other. Now, this is a roadmap. 
meaning that if the request will be <clears throat> not fulfilled by myself, rejected by myself, as we'll see in a minute, the request will, will just automatically move on to the consortial lender, the open university, and perhaps beyond that to other lenders. So this demonstrates the, um, the, the advantage here that we have by using the resource sharing request so that if I cannot fulfill this request that was placed by my own patron and I reject it as a lending request, it will just move on down the road up to the next lender. Now, the other lenders here may be lenders that own this resource electronically or physically, whatever, as long as the local process finds that they can be potential lenders, it will add them to the uh, uh, ROTA so the request can go um, on and be sent to them. Now, as you well know, there is a difference between how the local process manages requests um, based on physical inventory as opposed to requests based on electronic inventory. Uh, we talked about that again on the previous session. Uh, when, if the locate process identifies that uh, I have physical resources, it will not be able to identify that I have this specific issue that is requested. If this article is part of issue 53, the locate process will not be able to identify that specific resolution, only the fact that I have the journal. So just the fact by the fact that I have this ISSN, I have this journal, that's how the looking process will add myself as a lender. But if, let's say, other lenders here do have this electronically, then the looking process is uh, much more fine-tuned and will identify um, availability down to the article information. So the Open University may have this article electronically and be added to the RODA uh, based on that. So we talked about, again, the looking process and the difference between physical inventory and electronic inventory on uh, previous session. We're not going into detail, details of that um, now. Um, but this is again to just make the point this resource sharing request has a RODA and has the advantages of being managed through a RODA. So if I just do my uh, send, and because myself is the first lender on this RODA, we will see that a lending request has been created here at my Alma University. Again, the request was sent to myself. Myself is a partner with my own library's idle symbol uh, and my own library's URL. That is why I got the lending request created in my lending request task list with all the article information for me to uh, process. Now, the way that I will uh, process these requests, um, now we see that the request is linked to my physical inventory. We will not take a look now at the full process of how I, as a lender, will process this request. That's exactly what we will do in the second half of our session. So let's just assume for now that I, you know, found this issue, digitized the uh, correct article. I now have the PDF file. Um, all I have to do is go to ship item digitally, upload that PDF file. And that's it. The patron, my own patron, uh, will get that e email that we talked about in the previous session um, with the links that enable the patron to authenticate and just download that article. So what we've seen is a, a very simple uh, uh, workflow. Patron just get this for me. In our example, I was able to supply this request. I got a lending request in my own library. I went on and digitized, uploaded, and got the uh, request, which is pretty much the same workflow as I would have done if the patron would have submitted an accusation request, right? I would have taken this uh, issue from the shelf, digitized, uploaded, um, and that's it, uh, done. So it is the same workflow. It doesn't uh, present a new workflow for the library. It is the same workflow that you would do if you would have a digitization workflow. But for the patron experience, uh, it would be a uh, consolidated experience, one request for get this for me digitally um, and not two types of, uh, of requests and have the advantages of having a RODA to the request. Moshe, can I just interrupt for one moment, please? Sure, please go ahead. Uh, we don't have any questions or comments and we're almost halfway done. So I just like to confirm, everybody still hear us and see us okay? It's okay if there's questions, but I want to make sure the reason isn't because 
There's no good connection. Can anyone just send in and say yes? Okay, people still hear us, Moshe. Okay, it's simply everything is so clear, Moshe. That's why there's no questions or comments. Go ahead, take it away. All right. So, a few minutes to talk about the configuration that uh, made this happen. Um, so there were two elements there, uh, other than the partner record, which I, I'm not showing here. You all know how to configure a partner record and how to use the ISO symbol from my own resource sharing library and put it on a partner record so the request will be sent to myself. Uh, that's pretty uh, straightforward. Um, I do want to take a few minutes to talk about how I got the get this form link to show there and not have the digitization uh, request uh, option. And uh, the way this was uh, done is that um, I use display logic rules here. And we can see the uh, display logic rules list. And the three rules here are the ones that made this happen. First of all, I had a rule that says hide the general digitization and general hold request services. Again, if you're familiar with these services, then very good. If not, you can uh, look for more information. I will not talk about the details of these services, but these services are intended to enable a process when you're requesting an article or something that is um, you know, not cataloged um, as in the example we're talking about. So I'm suppressing this service option. I don't want the, um, the uh, 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 patrons to have this uh, request option, only, my, only that get this formula link. And then I have two rules here that are saying hide all request options, all digitization or booking, if there is a general electronic service of type no request for article. Now, as we'll see, this general electronic service is actually a dummy service, which I'm hiding right on the next rule. So it's not a service, a real service that I want to show. But this service, as we'll see in a minute, shows up only if my search result is an article. We'll see in a minute how that is done. This way, this uh, rule here actually can be read as if saying, hide all request options if the search result is an article. This is a, a trick that is uh, pretty common. Many libraries are using that uh, to hide services based on the uh, type of search result that I found. In my example here, I want these, the request options to behave differently if the patron found an article as opposed to if the patron found a book. Um, so I create this general electronic service. And as we'll see, this general electronic service will show up only if the search result is an article. But I don't want to show this, uh, this uh, electronic service. So I hide it right after the rule. And it's important that this uh, hide rule is after the rule that uses this, uses this um, as uh, input. So in the order that it is shown here. And this is uh, what the, um, yeah, so this is the, uh, the rule. And this is what the general electronic service uh, looks like. It is a dummy service. So there's no need to think too much about the URL template or whatever public thing, et cetera. It's not going to be shown anyhow. It's going to be hidden as we uh, saw on this larger rule. The only important element of this general electronic service is the service availability rule. And the service availability rule here says, if the genre is an article, then display true. If not, then the default here is false. And the result is that this general electronic service shows up only if your search result is an article. And this is what allows us to uh, read that display logic rule as if it is saying hide request options if the search result is an article, because this general electronic service shows up only if our genre is an article. So this is how I make sure that for article search results, there is no digitization option, even if I do have that uh, journal in uh, physical format in my uh, library. So instead, I will have only the resource sharing option. But as we've seen, the resource sharing option has been relabeled and showed up as get this for me. And this is done by a simple change of a label. So here I'm showing the Primo V way to configure that. But of course, the equivalent screens exist also for uh, those of you using Primo. 
Um, configuring the labels, again, for Primo V, I have request option labels. And there, the resource sharing uh, label can be changed instead of the out of box resource sharing to say, get this for me. And this is how we achieved that single service, get this for me. No other request option showing there. If you found an article, you will have only a get this for me request option. And it will create a bore request, send it uh, to me as a lender if I have that uh, journal, to other lenders if I don't. And even if I do have that journal, if I as lender reject that request, for example, uh, the patron, this article belong is from volume 60, which I do not have. I as a lender reject the request. The borrow request will just move on down the road to the next lender and send it to another lender that may have this either physically or electronically. That's very quickly the uh, uh, first half. Um, and again, shows how you can consolidate the, the uh, process. Um, what we would like to do in our second half is to talk about, okay, what's the lender's workflow? I, as a lender, got a request. It could be a request that I, uh, uh, that is actually my own patron requesting as we just, uh, as we just seen uh, for our first half hour now, but it could be also a lending request that I got from some other uh, uh, borrower. Could be a request that another Alma borrower requested from me via an ISO request. It could be a lender request that I got through Rapid. So even if you're using Rapid, you may have uploaded into the Rapid Holdings information about uh, books that you are willing to digitize and send as a document delivery uh, service. So uh, uh, if you've done that, then you will receive lending requests for stuff that you own uh, physically. Let's take a look at what the lender process would be in that case. Okay, so if I get a lending request, uh, of course, it may be that I got a lending request for something that I own electronically. Um, in that case, yeah, I use manage fulfillment options, and then I get a, I have a link to the article, I download, I ship. That's not what we're here to talk about. Um, this, again, is on another uh, session that, uh, that we did. Um, it is a very simple process. I just click through this link, get to the article. Uh, the, the link will take me directly to the article if the uh, vendor's platform supports that. Download the article. I upload it back to Alma. That's it. I'm done. What we want to talk about now is what happens when I got the request and I have this resource in physical format. So it is either a book that I'm willing to scan a chapter from or an article um, from a journal that I own uh, physically. So there may be, when I got this lending request, the lab you may implement um, a number of, of policies here. First of all, it may be that the resource sharing staff will digitize that chapter or article themselves and just send it away, not involving any branch library in this uh, process. That's one option. Another option is where the resource sharing staff will not be processing the request. Instead, they will ask to the branch library to do that digitization of the chapter of the article, whatever. Of course, this may depend on you know, your internal workflows. Uh, for example, if the resource sharing staff uh, don't have access to the uh, uh, shelves where these journals are, are located uh, or the books are located, then obviously you will want to uh, relay this request to a branch library. Um, so it's really dependent on how you are internally organized, the uh, resource sharing library and the branch libraries, uh, but you can use either that or that. And if the request is sent to a branch library, it could either happen manually or automatically. We'll take a look at both options. Um, so you can either manually, as the resource sharing staff, manually assign the request to a specific branch library or just have Alma do that automatically. So what we'll do now for the next couple of minutes is take a look at uh, these different options. The first is where the resource sharing staff digitize the required resource and send it. So they do it themselves. Take the item from the shelf, uh, create a PDF of that article or chapter, and just, just send it away. 
So what, what would that process look like? It's, it's a simple process, of course. It doesn't involve too many steps. Uh, we have the lending request in our task list. I will go on and just kind of fix it. I could either use the print slip option that will create a slip for the specific request that I'm looking at right now, or I could select a number of requests, do the check boxes here, and do print slip to print a number of slips or print a slip report. This is very much like the slips that are printed at the pick from shelf uh, tasks in the fulfillment area. So it's pretty much the same slip. It would look like this. And of course, configure the slip. Uh, I've done some fine tuning to uh, my uh, demo environment here. And we have all the information on the top here, the journal title, article, pages, volume, um, all uh, up here. And the request ID also up here in the barcode format. So this is the slip that I would um, get. Of course, um, not seen here on this capture. There's also the location of that uh, physical item, what shelf, the phone number, where I can find it. I print the slip, I go to the shelf, I get the uh, book or um, issue, I digitize the pages that I see here on my slip. Now I have the PDF file that is on my computer. I just go on and do ship item digitally on the task list, upload the uh, file, and that's it. The request is done. The agent gets that email. The lending request is out of my active list. Very simple workflow. Print slip, get to the shelf. You have all the required information on in the slip. Just digitize it, upload it using the ship digitally um, menu. That's it. Patron got, uh, patrons get their email. You're done with your lending request. The other option is where you cannot just print slip and go to the shelf. Use the resource sharing staff. Um, the shelf is not physically here. You can't access the shelf. It's not, it is some uh, some offsite storage. It is some uh, some closed uh, area, some other campus. Not something that you can access. You need somebody at that branch library to do that digitization. And here, as we mentioned, there are a number of options. You could set the system to say, okay, I, this is sharing staff, I want to take a look at each and every Linux request that comes into this one system, and I want to manually um, create a task for the branch library to digitize. So I don't want that to happen automatically. In that case, if that's the choice that I make, then I will look at the lending request, use the manage of note options, and from there be able to place a request. Um, either a title level request using the button on the top here, or select from one of the libraries that have a copy, Oops. one of the libraries that has a copy, using the action items here and create a request for a specific branch library. If I have some preference, I want the request to be requested from the library, not the central library. So I can just go on and place a request on that specific uh, library using uh, the request option to show up here. So in this case, I as a resource sharing staff have more control. I can decide whether I want to create a branch request or not. Of course, this creates more manual work the research and staff um, so that I may choose to actually have that happen automatically. And the parameter that is used to control that is called RS resource sharing, auto request lending. If set to true, then every request lending request will have automatically a title level request created for that uh, book that needs to be digitized. The uh, uh, relevant information will be included in the digitization request that is uh, created, uh, and it will be a title level um, request. So for example, pages information will be included if it's a specific chapter, but the request will be created automatically. And the indication of the fact that the request is created is that the lending request has this being processed status. The being processed is always an indication to you that the lending request has a branch request, a fulfillment request that has been created. So somebody in the circulation desk has been assigned the task of getting this item from a shelf and processing it. So you don't have to worry about it. It's being processed, meaning someone in the fulfillment circulation desk has been assigned a pick from shelf uh, request to fulfill this. Now this works well if the request came in for a book, for example, 
or specific chapter that is required to be digitized. Uh, in case of a book, it doesn't really matter which one of the um, copies uh, will be selected. So you may choose to have the request go out automatically. And if you don't have any preference with uh, which branch line will be assigned, uh, so AMA will create a title of a request and will um, randomly pretty much select the copy, the holdings that should be assigned this request, and that specific library will get assigned that to the shelf uh, task. However, it does get a little more complicated if the request is not for a book, but rather for a, a serial item, um, an issue of a journal, or a multi-volume. In that case, you may not want a title level request. Um, because you want to request the specific issue or volume that needs to be requested. So in that case, you have a few options, actually three options. We'll uh, step through each one of them in the next uh, 10 minutes. How to process requests, lending requests that have come in, and the requested physical resource is um, um, a multi-volume or a serial um, issue. One option would be to say, okay, in this case, don't create any uh, um, automatic requests. You know, have automatic requests created for uh, chapter requests, but not for uh, serials. And that you would do using the two parameters, the auto request lending with serials and auto request lending with volume issue. The recommendation would be in that case to turn them both to false. And it would mean that request for book, get an automatic request, and get its status being processed. Requests for um, issues, for physical uh, issues, do not get an automatic legalization uh, request and remain in this initial status created lending request. That's your indication that the lending request is not being processed by any branch library and that you, the user sharing staff, have to place that request manually. So this option is very suitable if you're a library that remember we referred to the different practices as to how to catalog uh, your serial issues. So if you're from type one, you catalog every single item that you receive um, via acquisitions, this would probably make sense uh, uh, for you um, because you want to, as a resource sharing staff, place a request on the specific issue that is identified in Alma just that Alma cannot do that identification automatically, you need to do that manually. So you want to do that manually by turning these parameters to false. This is what it would look like. You would have the lending request. It's in the status of created lending request. We'll use managed fulfillment options to get the option to place a request. If you do place request, you get a form that has a drop down of all your volumes issues that you have analog. So you would select one of them, Place the request on that specific issue, and from there on, it's a fulfillment request managed through the pick from shelf tests, uh, etc. So you manually identified the correct uh, physical issue based, of course, on the information that is on the lending request. Alma could not do that bridging automatically. So even though the request, the resource sharing request, says it is volume two, Alma is not able to map that into your issue catalog as V2, and therefore you will do that here manually in this option. That is option one. There are other options. You could still have Alma create request automatically. And this would be um, most suitable if you're not cataloging every single item. Um, so in our um, practices list, you would perhaps be type two from that list. In other words, you have one physical item um, that reflects all of your 57 issues. So, you know, you can have a title level request created for Alma. It doesn't matter because um, you really have only one physical item in Alma and all those 57 uh, volumes that are out there are not really cataloged in Alma anyhow. So you're not going to be placing a request for volume two or volume three because they're not cataloged as physical items in Alma anyhow. So you just need that request to come into the system so that somebody can uh, look at a pick from at that pick slip, see that it says take uh, issue 57 and um, digitize pages 20 to 30. And that a title level request would do just fine. So if you are using that uh, practice, it would 
probably makes sense to allow the title level request to be created automatically by setting these parameters to true. The result will be that you will have a lending, uh, that the lending request will create the degradation request automatically, even if the request is for something that is a serial or a multi-body. Now, what would happen is that um, you get a title request, say the central library has a pick from shelf task, and that task says, you know, take this uh, uh, journal, the request gets all the information pushed into it. So the request says it's on 56, and it pages 20 to 30. Um, so you would, using that pick slip, go to the proper shelf, get the exact item. And again, the exact item is not cataloged in Alma, but you still, you, know, you have that information on your slip. So you, you take the specific item, you digitize what needs to be digitized. Now you have the uh, file created. Um, you have not processed any physical item, so you've not, you know, put any item in transit from a uh, uh, library to the division department because you don't have a part of the physical item. So once you have digitized what you need, your next step would be to use deliver digital documents. It's a new menu option that has been added a couple of months ago. It enables very easy upload of digitized uh, content based on the request ID. So you, you skip all that, put item in transit to the division department, look at the managing process items, task list, all of that uh, workflow, which is intended for when you are actually moving a physical item to some digitization location, you're skipping all that, just taking the item, accessing the digital, delivered digital documents uh, menu, and that gives you a UI where all you have to do is scan in the request ID, which can be either the resource sharing request ID or the fulfillment digitization ID. Karma will be able to handle either one. So from your pixel, you can just scan in the uh, request ID in here, go on and upload the file, and that's it, you're done. So it is a very simple process. Again, you got a pick from shelf uh, task. It has the article information. You take the item, you digitize, you go to this menu, upload the file, that's it, request is done. The third option would be um, perhaps the most appropriate one if you're not cataloging any items at all. So your third option there on the list, you just have a holdings record. You don't have any physical item. That's when the general request uh, can be used. The general request is a fulfillment mechanism uh, that enables you to place requests for something that you don't even have a physical item for. So in this case, if you're working this way, you can use auto request lending with serials and um, auto request lending with volume issues set to general. That will create a general request. And this is what the workflow would look like. So there's a little clip here that shows the entire process. Um, from the uh, beginning. So I'm looking for a specific article, ID Patron, uh, in the Central Discovery Index. I'm looking for this article. I found the article. This is, you know, the stuff that we walked through uh, in our first half of our session. I get the sharing option. I get the form with all the article information in here. So I am just ready to go on and just submit my request, confirm the copyright terms, and that's it. I have a user sharing request uh, created. In my borrow task list, refresh, uh, we will see the request that has been created uh, for my uh, borrow request. It has all the article information. Yeah, you've seen that by now. Um, the partner has already been selected. So it's the Open University. So if you just go on and send, have done this manually, of course, you can have this happen automatically. Okay, so we have this request. It's been sent to the lender. Now is the interesting stuff. Let's look at the lender request. So here's the Open University. That's our lender. We look at the lending request. Then we will see the request that has come in. Uh, it has come in with all the article information uh, in here. So if I click here, other details, um, 
the quick link, the quick view has also been improved by now with uh, more article information. So all the article information is uh, in here. And being processed is an indication that a digitization request has been created. So even though this is a single request, the digitization request has been created. And in this example, it's going to be a general uh, request. So the general request will have all that information, which volume it is, volume 48, which you want, what pages are requested, um, um, pages 91. Um, all that information is on the request. So if I now navigate to look at the from shelf request that has been created for the central library, um, then we see the request. You can see in the request notes all that information, the description, the volume, publication date, the exact article information, the pages, everything here is in the request note. And that gets printed on the slip as well. So I can use all this information to access the correct issue, which I have. It's not cataloged, but I do have. So I can go on and get that specific issue from my shelf um, and um, take it to, uh, to my scanner in order to digitize. I can print the slip. This is the fulfillment slip, but again, it is much like the slip that uh, uh, we saw before when we looked at a slip for uh, resource sharing. I have quick printing here, so I can uh, just quick print into my uh, OneNote. So we can take a look at uh, the slip. That's what the slip will look like. You see in the request note all the information uh, that has come in, the request ID everything here on my uh, slip. Of course, you can configure this um, to add or remove information from the slip. But this information is what I use to access the, uh, the correct shelf. OK, next, I got the item from the shelf. I go to my scan in items. And either I create an item for it, an example here, I skip the step of creating an item. So I just scan in the barcode here. But of course, you think that you actually have the items already barcoded. So it doesn't have to be scheme free, even if you have the items. When I scan in the item, the AMA notifies me that you may have a request that matches it. So it doesn't link automatically the request to this item. Instead, it says you may have an item, a request that uh, matches. Um, if I uh, um, know that the item that I have is the issue that I'm uh, that I'm, I've intended to process, I do attach like I did right now, and go on and attach this request. Okay, so I'd like to emphasize uh, this could also be useful if you are using Scheme One. You have the physical items um, catalog. Uh, you still have this general request. It will create the request automatically. When you scan in a barcode, AMA will not automatically link the request to the barcode you scanned in. Instead, it will suggest, do you want to process this request with this item? Um, and then you can say, yes, this is the request I need, and this is the item that I need, and continue from there. So this general option gives you a solution um, to if you're using Scheme 3, or if you're using Scheme 1, you have items uh, cataloged but you don't want to process the request manually. You want to have the request automatically flow into the branch library. The branch library will get the pick slip like we just saw, um, and we'll get the item from the shelf. When putting in the barcode, uh, Alma will ask, do you want to fulfill this request? Is this a request you want to fulfill? You say yes, attach the request, and that's it. We'll see now how the revision process uh, continues on with this. Uh, okay, so you'll have this uh, little clip here. It's embedded here in the, uh, in the slides here. So you have this also for, for a reference. Um, uh, this is pretty nice because it enables automating the request process, even if you have physical items cataloged or if you have none cataloged, uh, you can still have the request automatically go to the branch library. Now, of course, uh, whether or not you have you want to request to go to the branch library is, is your selection, is your choice. Um, it may mean more work for the fulfillment uh, staff uh, because they get requests that they need to uh, process. 
uh, or reject. They want that decision to be done by the control, by, by the user sharing staff, so that I uh, manually control that as we saw in the first uh, option, or move more of the requesting process, the request processing into the uh, branch libraries, like we saw in these uh, options. Um, just a matter of who does this work of um, looking at requests and either preferring or rejecting them. But you have the options manually or automatically manage these requests. Okay, we're almost out of time, so we're not going into all the details of this very small little uh, topic that is here in the last two or three slides here. But this is just to say that when the. Uh, Moshe, when the I'd also like to leave a little bit of time for a few questions which came in, if that's possible. Okay, so let's, let's do that. So uh, we'll leave this uh, last. Uh, Two slides here. Let's, okay, let's I will read to you the question if you'd like. That will be very helpful. Thank you. Okay, can we see a document delivery workflow for a situation in which ILL is not currently done in Alma? Just singularly on site digitization requests not sent to lenders. And I know we do have Moshe on the uh, uh, and the Knowledge Center, a five part series on digitization requests, which does include this, but you can point that out and feel. I'll send in the chat the link to that while you talk. Yeah, yeah my, but I think you, you, you said it right. So there's the digitization process that is uh, in, in Alma that is not a research sharing process. Uh, you all know, send that information in. What we've demonstrated is how we can uh, um, do that through the research sharing process. Uh, and again, the library up, uh, staff uh, workflow is very similar. So information you see there is, is pretty much very similar to what we've seen here. Yeah, I'm going to send them a document delivery patron digitization request set up and workflow. We did a five part series at the beginning of the COVID-19 on digitization requests. Right. I'll send a link to the movie as well. I'll read the next question. Meanwhile, mostly, uh, Moshe, uh, what would be the benefit of using Alma for resource sharing instead of another service like Iliad? Oh boy. <laughs> Go ahead, Moshe. Yeah. So, so yes, uh, what, what we've shown here is actually uh, uh, similar to what Iliad would do, right? So you'll have a digitization request that either a, a resource sharing request um, or, or not. The uh, advantages, of course, of using uh, uh, Alma, and this really depends on how much traffic you have to it uh, and how comfortable you are with it. It brings more work into Alma and less into a, another uh, third party uh, system. So it really depends on how much of your um, requesting is, you know, resource sharing and how much of it is really digitization uh, requests. Um, it may make sense to you to bring more of that uh, uh, work into your uh, uh, resource sharing, um, into your Alma processes, especially as these processes uh, would be managed in workflows very similar to uh, uh, fulfillment uh, workflows. Uh, so you may have, you know, more analytics about them and just more, you know, consolidated workflows. Um, but yes, you may say, you know, if you have large quantities of your requests flowing through Iliad and you're, uh, you know, comfortable with that, um, then yes, you can continue, of course, doing that. It's just to say you can bring more of that um, traffic um, into Alma. Okay. Okay, last question, Moshe. Someone asks if you need to be logged in in order to see the request and submit buttons for the digitization request. So yes, so uh, um, yes. signal request options always require you to, to be uh, signed in. Uh, if you're not, then you've got a, a link there saying sign in and only then the request options will show. Okay, and that brings us right to the end, Moshe. This was a very uh, informative session. Thanks for enlightening us. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, the recording of this will be posted soon. In 24 hours, we will post it. We'll send a message out to the Alma list that it's been posted and it will be in the on-demand tab 
of the web page of the Ex Libris webinars that we saw earlier today. So thanks everyone for joining and we'll see you. Oh, this is a reminder tomorrow we have the authority control task list session. That's going to be part three of our three part series on authority control and Alma. So we hope to see you tomorrow as well. Have a nice. Thank you.